Well, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is your friend, Noe. After doing the two videos of the seven letters to the seven churches that were in Asia Minor, it got me thinking about how bad has the teachings of the truth really become. And it didn't take long for me to see a very disturbing trait going on in our society today. I do know from when I was at a church, a local church here for a few years until I just, I couldn't take the thing, the stuff that was so wrong in this church that I did just, I moved on. But one thing had come to mind after this was from one of the deacons. One of the deacons had mentioned in a Bible study and in a, a meeting one night that we all have to learn one verse to defend God against those that will attack us. And one verse to me doesn't work because one verse can be interpreted any way that you want it to be by just using one verse. Unless you give that one verse and you explain that verse in context of what that verse means and how it was used and what the true meaning in that chapter and everything was all about. And then you can get the correct interpretation. But in order to use just one verse to convince somebody that, you know, God is real and all this is is real and everything, it doesn't work. But what I wanted to talk about is why one verse can be so damning to many people's souls. And it came from a video. I saw this video and I know of of these two sisters and they've fallen a long ways from the truth and they've they've lost their true way and now the narcissism of some popularity has gotten so deep entrenched within them that I don't think they realize just how far from the truth they have truly fallen but what this one sister was talking about which it, it blew my mind this sister was talking about we understand that God sent down Jesus he was crucified and he rose again but a lot of the prophecies of the Old Testament talked about the Messiah that would come and how he would walk, walk amongst us and he would be our God and we would be his people. And she went on talking two, three, four verses all saying the same thing throughout the Old Testament and she even went into the, the book of Revelation and in chapter 21 and mentioned the same verse said again of he will walk amongst us and he will be our God and we will be his people. But then what blew me out of the water was when she was making her point that God's already here. Jesus is already here walking amongst us and, and we're his people and he's our God and these end time prophecy people saying oh he's going to manifest and, and she was calling them wrong and she was using these verses to say that it's already here this is already our paradise and there's nothing further from the truth than that. In the Old Testament, 
the people were told that Christ will walk amongst us. That he did for three years. And the start of the New Testament, we know of the birth of Christ and he disappeared for 30 years, then he showed up and he walked amongst the people. But then the teaching of what happens after his crucifixion is the whole point that she was getting so wrong and she was misrepresenting. And sadly, I'm sure there's a good portion of people that believe it. When Jesus was talking about he will walk amongst us and he we will be his his people and he will be our lord our our god is happening today that i will say is happening but as it was explained he will be here in the spirit he will be in our hearts in spirit now we understand this as what is one of the verses when people are worried about you know fellowship in in massive churches and amongst large groups of people and what was explained to them where two or more of you meet in my name i am with you so just you and your your spouse or a friend just two of you and you're gathered in the name of Jesus Christ of edifying and glorifying his name and praising God for everything then Christ is with us and Christ is with us today in the spirit but to deny that he will return to smite and end this wickedness that is today's earth and to smite those wicked and to smite the the evil and the the doers of iniquity is blaspheming God's word Jesus said it right to his disciples that he will return and when asked, when shall you return? No man know, knows the time of my return. But the Father does. God knows when he will send back Jesus. We are explained, it, it, it is fully explained right in the book of Revelation that Jesus will return right upon a white horse and he will smite the evil and the wicked upon this earth. So even Jesus stated he will return. And Revelation explained to, explains to us he will return on a white horse. And written right upon his, his thigh is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And he will smite the wicked with his words that cut as a two-edged sword. And we heard of this tongue as a two-edged sword right in the, the letters. Right in one of the letters where it was explained. A two-edged sword. His tongue is like a two-edged sword. So this is the problem with taking one verse and putting your own interpretation to it. It reminds me of 2 Timothy chapter 3 when Paul had, had wrote to Timothy of the blasphemers. And this is what it is. You're changing the interpretation. As I mentioned in the videos about Jesus and him being with us and the chain of command. God gives it to Jesus. Jesus gives it to the spirit, an angel, and the angel brought it to John. And the same you will hear throughout the Bible and in many of the Old Testament. What, what did Abraham 
mention messenger from God it was a messenger from God there are a few incidences where God communicated directly with his servant that was doing his works for what God wanted done but this is the problem we have today of people interpreting it the way they want it to be to glorify themselves as truth speakers and truth tellers with no glory to God Jesus is amongst us and he walks amongst us today but he is in the spirit and in Revelation chapter 21 when you look at it in context what's he talking about Jesus is talking about heaven he's talking about we will be in heaven with him he will walk amongst us in heaven and we he will be our God and we will be his people so you must take these verses in context and this was the same thing I had mentioned when talking about the the churches and talking about the debates and, and the problems and the doubt people are dealing with today is because they are believing other people's interpretation of the Bible without reading it for themselves. So they are casting doubt upon themselves. And if you're casting doubt upon yourself, then you're not walking away from those doers of iniquity. You are sitting amongst them. You are with them. You are allowing them to give you a meaning of something that you can't prove with your own readings and studying and interpretation of what the Bible truly says. So if you're not studying it and interpreting it for yourself, then you will miss the truth. As I have always said for many years, faith alone cannot lead one to salvation without the truth. If you do not have the truth, if you do not listen and study and understand exactly what Jesus was doing here and exactly what his words were, then how can you determine that or even make relevant the one saying that is so true that Jesus says, I am the truth, the way, and the life. No man gets to the Father but by me. Period. End of story. And that's exactly what the context of that verse was. Is that he is the only way. Because he is the truth. He is the way. And he is the giver of everlasting life. This is, you know, and, and to say Christ is not going to return, then why did you overlook his very teachings to his own disciples? When, when he mentioned right to his disciples clearly that he will return. And in Revelations, it explains exactly that. And I gazed, and a white horse, and he upon the white horse, written upon his thigh, Lord of Lord, King of Kings, and he came forth. Remember in Thessalonians, the dead in Christ shall rise first. When Christ is returning, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that remain shall be caught up into the clouds with him as he returns to smite the wicked upon this earth and that's it when Christ returns it's done it's over with his words coming out are smiting and wiping the wicked right out there is no fighting against him at this point 
Yes, they talk about Jesus' love. Yes, Jesus is love. But when he returns, as explained in the book of Revelation, he is bringing God's vengeance. Many today hate that. God is of love. He's not of vengeance. Well, yes, he is. God is a caring, loving, forgiving, merciful God. But he is also one of vengeance and wrath and jealousy. God is a jealous God. You shall put no other gods before me. That's the first commandment. Point. Boom. Here you go. You shall put no other gods before me. What was the biggest problem he had in Asia Minor? What was the biggest problem within those five churches that were rebuked? They were putting other gods ahead of God and before God. God was not number one. He was somewhere on down the list. And now what this one sister was talking about, think of that. Think of the people that listen to her and now truly believe Christ is not going to return. Christ is already here. Um, Christ has always been here. He's been here in the spirit. But you want to be on the right side of God when he returns to bring vengeance upon the wicked. See, people need to understand this vengeance that they hate to, to understand or listen to or even be told of. It's God's creation. Earth, man, everything here is God's creation. He can do with it as he pleases. And to say that people of sin will have their place in heaven is to tell those that have repented and have turned from many of their sinful ways. They are still, we are, all of us, we're still of sin and we still are sinful. But we do feel guilty. We do feel bad. And we thrive every day to do better and be better people. And that is what matters. To think that Jesus is going to allow this righteous person that has done what was asked of him and has sacrificed and has given of himself going to heaven. But now this person that has listened to lies and has believed lies and carries a sin, a very sinful, very, very sinful lifestyle in their hearts. Oh, they're going to be allowed in because these people over here said I was going to be. But they don't have the say in the matter. Jesus does. How can Jesus allow in those that have been deemed worthy at the same time of letting those that we were warned would not inherit the kingdom of heaven? To say that this person living in this sinful lifestyle is allowed to go to heaven, but this liar, this deceiver, this thief, this murderer is not. This person that has committed many acts of adultery and these people that their their idols are are people, are politicians, are rock stars, movie stars, athletes. Those are their idols. So to claim that these murderers and these people that commit adultery and murder and thief and liars and deceivers, they're not allowed in. Well, what makes their sin any worse than that of this group of people that we're supposed to bow down to today and we're supposed to let right into God's church and we'll forget about this truth and this truth and this truth over here. 
because we don't want to offend you but you're good to go you're you're going to get into heaven because you're such a good person but you're leaving that sin in your heart how you cannot condemn this sinner over here while praising this sinner here because we're all sinners we all have to work hard every day to be as righteous as possible and when I saw what this one sister was saying it was so disheartening that we don't have to thrive for the day that Christ returns to be deemed worthy and to be seen righteous and worthy before the eyes of Jesus but, oh he's already here he's already walking amongst us he's already with us and to tell people he's not going to remanifest remanifest himself and return upon the white horse to smite the wicked well then that makes him a liar now doesn't it when he told his disciples that he would be returning that makes him a liar she has just made Jesus a liar because he claimed it himself that he will return and no man knows of the hour of his return but the father so how many people now are believing they're in paradise they're they're good they're fine they're they're the most righteous people on earth because Jesus is right there with them yes Jesus is with you in the spirit and he will manifest again in the flesh and be brought back to smite the wicked upon this earth and that's the truth you really must hold true so I needed to get that out because the Holy Spirit put it in my heart to do so these people saying oh God spoke to me no God spoke to Jesus Jesus spoke to the to the angel and the angel appeared as the Holy Spirit within your heart and gave you the message don't be fooled so I hope this doesn't upset too many people but I'm sure it will but the truth is the truth no matter how bad it hurts so until next time ladies and gentlemen God willing this is no way out.